good Thursday morning. How is everybody today? Just wanted to say good morning. Yes, I'm on my drive to work. And as you can see, it's bright and sunshiny today. No clouds. Okay, so there's a little uh, uh, condensation on my back window. But, you know, it's a good day. I am uh, on my way to work and today it seems like a pretty full day. Starting off this morning, we're doing some textbook ordering, which is a ridiculously tedious process for our textbook coordinator. Uh, yesterday we started it and you have to put in the ISBN number, you have to put in the title, you have to put in the subject and it's real funny because you have to put in the subject. It's like two places. What kind? What course is it for? Science. What subject is it? Science. Hello? Why does that need to be twice? Uh, the other thing that I thought was really interesting is that um, we have, because our textbook order, we went with one company, we did get a discount. But uh, the way that the company did it, they did the discount on the total. And so my, um, our coordinator, I mean, our textbook coordinator person, the one that was doing the ordering, she was like, okay, so what's the list price? And so we would tell her the price, but the price wasn't with a discount. So, uh, when it got done, it would be way over what our total is. And if that's what you asked for, then the state expects that's what you're going to spend but we knew what our total was that we're going to get from the state. And so if we got that total, that would be way over um, what we, what our two subjects could spend. So I don't, I don't really know how this is going to play out. We wrote to our, um, our textbook rep and let her know how the process seems to be going and that we really needed the, uh, the discounted price on each thing. So just wondering how that's all going to play out. It's very interesting. In the past, this is a, like the first time a big textbook order has happened with this new system. In the past, uh, the textbooks would be adopted by the state and then your, your district would uh, choose what they wanted. And then basically they would just tell the state, hey, this is what we need and this is how many we need. And they would be sent. Well, now you get an allotment. It's called an IMA, Instructional Material Allotment. And from that allotment, you have to uh, get your textbooks, your technology, any of the other instructional things that you think you need has to come out of this allotment. So it's very interesting because even like <coughs> textbook, I mean like, computers for the teachers to use has to come out of this allotment. So it sounds like a lot of money, but break it down. It's not anything. When you consider that even discounted, uh, you know, when you buy a teacher computer, you may be spending like two to 50 because you're buying in bulk for a teacher computer. But when you're talking about that many, Oh, Oh, I can see the sun right here. Wow, I wonder what that looks like. Huh. Anyway, when you're ordering that many, that's a big chunk of money. And, you know, I don't know if you know anything about it, but, you know, just like our your own personal computer, you have to go through a cycle of it. Like, those things aren't meant to last, like, you know, 12 years or anything like that. So, um, the computers are on a cycle where uh, certain ones are replaced each year. So, maybe, like, I don't know, like 200 this year or uh, maybe, sorry, hold on. Good morning. Start of a very busy weekend. It is Friday and I'm very excited because I am on my way to my very first ever Plexus convention. And I, um, I was trying yesterday to go to the opening session which was at 3.30. I even left work early so that I could go. However, I had to go home and put up an electric fence around my chickens to keep my dog, who is so fascinated with them, away from the chickens. And I can't blame the dog because 
he's an outside dog and he's always been an outside dog. He comes in in the winter when it's cold and he's a very sweet dog, but he just doesn't know that everything outside is not for him to play with or to eat. He chases everything and that's what outside dogs do. But on the other hand, he is, uh, you know, a great deterrent from anyone that shouldn't be coming in my yard to come in my yard. He's sweet as anything when people come in the yard. You know, he's a goofy old. You just talk to him funny and he does that goofy old dog look. But anyway, so my son and I put up this electric fence that I bought. It was a whole kit in one. It had the, uh, the part that you plug in, the wire, the stakes, the little flags, all that kind of good stuff. Set it up so that I can unplug it when I need to like when my grandson is over but by that time I think my dog will be thoroughly trained at first I was thinking that I was just going to stretch it out and put it in one direction and to be honest I can change it because first there's a lot of wire left over and the other thing is that um, the stakes are very easy to uh, pull up and move around so I'm giving him 24 hours to see how he does with this What's really funny is my little dog walks right under it and her little tail touches, but it doesn't do anything. So I'm like, what the heck? And I thought, well, maybe it doesn't work. But my son volunteered to try it out and he was like, ah, it works, it works. So I just thought it was really funny. All right, so I'm on my way. It's still bright and early. It's normal time that I would leave for work. I uh, got myself a... Uh, a sick day today I called in and well not called in you do everything on the computer so I took my day so it'll count against me but you know it doesn't really matter because that's why they give you the days so that you can use the days and uh, so I'm on my way the biggest challenge is I have to fight city traffic which you can tell by the way I drive in that I don't do city traffic too well because I don't have to drive in it. So it'll be very interesting to see how that goes. I kept listening and watching um, the traffic reports on the news to see if it was backed up in the way that I was going. And even if it is, oh well, bummer, you know, that's the way it's going to be. I'm going to have to go in that direction. And as you can see today, it is overcast. There's no sunglasses on my head. Uh, it is overcast today. And uh, they said that it's going to burn off. And a lot of times when it's like this, by usually by, you know, 10 o'clock, the sun has come out and it, it has burned off. So I'm, I'm excited to go learn all about this company that I have uh, taken the chance on, Plexus. I love taking it. I do the pink drink and I'm also right now doing a morning drink. Uh, it's a protein drink that I'm doing. Um, so I'm excited to learn more about it and uh, to see uh, the opportunities that I can possibly have. So that's today. Tomorrow, again, is another Plexus Day. And what's exciting is that uh, tomorrow night there's a concert and it's uh, Leanne Rhymes is going to be um, the featured act in the concert. So I'm so excited about that that Saturday. Then Sunday, um, I uh, am giving out two scholarships. I'm a president of a local teacher organization, and we give out scholarships to students that are going into the education field. And so on Sunday afternoon, I have the pleasure of handing out two scholarships uh, to two students who they have no idea that they're getting these scholarships. So I'm really excited about that. And then Monday evening, I get to do it again at the other high school. So it, that's really, that was exciting last year. It's exciting this year. So um, I look forward to that. And I think Sunday, if I'm not mistaken, but I think Sunday, my daughter is coming in with my grandkids. Uh, she has a doctor's appointment on Monday. So that should be um, fun to see them again and take take my grandson out to see the chickens um again it's going to be a busy weekend but i'm excited about all the opportunities and all the learning that can happen um 
still uh, haven't heard anything in the in the job front, and we'll see how that plays out. But uh, you know, it's just another day, another day. All right, so um, I'm gonna hit the highway. Love to y'all. Have a great day. Happy campers! What a beautiful day! Not really, it's cloudy and overcast, but it is a beautiful day. It's a Monday, and it is going to be a jam-packed day. Not only do I have work, and today is meeting Monday. Woo! Can you say woo with me? Because meeting Monday, ah, ah, it is not the way any of us should start the week. You should not start the week with hours and hours of meetings. If you multiply the number of hours times the number of people, that is how many productive hours you waste when you have meetings like that. I'm not sure. I think, okay, you can tell me I'm wrong, but I think it's a generational thing and I'm older. Come on. The generational thing is for me, if you can tell it to me in an email, do it. If you can put it on my calendar, do it. We don't have to have a face-to-face -to, -face to discuss the mundane things. We should only have a face-to-face -face when it's important collaborative things that we need to get done. And sometimes, okay, yeah, we're all in the same office, so a face-to-face -face would be good, actual face-to-face. But if we were in separate places, we could Google Hangout, we could Skype, we could go to meeting, we could do something else. Don't waste manpower. I feel like our Monday is really a waste of manpower. And it's hard to get moving after that because it's so, it brings you down so much. It's like, uh, so note to all those people in charge, Monday morning meetings, get rid of them ditch them. Say no to the Monday morning meetings, especially if they're going to last long. And remember all those other things. Okay. You can give me information by attaching it to my calendar, put it on a calendar invite, send me an email with a calendar invite in there. Let me know of the important things, but I don't need all of that. I don't need to sit in a meeting to hear it. All right. Well, that's just part of it. So then we have Monday morning meeting. And then this afternoon, I have to plan for some professional developments that we're doing. And sometimes, like, it's different. Like, different people present in different ways. And the girl that I present with, most of the time, she likes her things scripted. The other girl that I'm presenting with, she's like, um, and on the fly, basically, she's just the background and adds little comments. And I'm like, okay, generally I have it in my head. I just want to have the bullet points down and then I present. So with that being said, every presentation that you do, and some of you already know this, but like you have to put in your blurb about what it's going to be. And it's months and months ahead of time. So when you put something in months and months ahead of time, especially in education and in the world of technology things change so drastically that by the time it's time for you to present you might not believe the same way that you did when you put in your um in your proposal so word to the wise when you're putting in your proposal yes you're putting it in so they can get accepted but make sure there's wiggle room in there you want to have a little wiggle room so in case you change your mind you can uh, present it in a different way. For example, one of the um, presentations that I'm doing at camp, that's a conference for the advancement of mathematics teaching in Texas. Love it. Have gone so many times. It's great. You learn something new all the time. But anyway, um, one of the proposals that I put in was um, flipped classroom for parents. And I still believe that. But my partner was doing flipped classroom with her kids and I'm not sure that they're still doing that because she's in another district than I am. So the idea is that 
when we're teaching math, we have a lot of things that we do differently now, and parents don't understand it. They look at it like, Bleh. like I'm sure you have seen the Jimmy Kimmel things that he talks about. Oh, why would you do multiplication this way, or why would you do it that way? Okay, it's not necessarily about how you're coming up with the answer, but it is getting kids to think multiplicatively, okay? Before, someone used to just teach them that multiplication was repeated addition. And granted, you can come up with the answer that way, but multiple, multiplication is really multiplicative thinking. Like, if you think of two times three, right, you're thinking of, you're either thinking of three groups of two, and that's what you should be thinking of, so two, two, and two. Okay, now some people will say you're thinking of three groups, I mean two groups of three, which, you know, is okay. But the reason that you have to think about it in groups, you're putting the chunks together, is because when you get into the algebraic thought and you have 2x, you're you're not adding x and x together. You're thinking of, okay, so this is two groups of x and we don't know what x is. It's just, you have to be able to think of it multiplicatively. Oh, I think my camera's moving. So anyway, back to what I was going to tell you. So Flip Classroom for the Parents was really an opportunity for teachers to give parents the tools to help their kids. Well, I'm not in the classroom currently, so my whole thought is right now, okay, I got to be able to show teachers why this is important. Okay, so for example, I'm going to do a little segment on the open number line. I'm going to do it with my teachers that I'm about to do um, do some training with. <clears throat> I'm also doing fractions. I'm also uh, doing, uh, what else am I doing? Uh, fractions, open number line. Whoop. Oh, that was a good one. Yep, it shows you. It's live! Or is it Memorex? Maybe I'll edit that sucker out. Hopefully. All right, I'm coming up to a place where I can put it back in. There we go. Anyway, so um, what I'm going to do when I do these uh, PDs is we have this really cool thing that you can... It's kind of like a microphone. You hook it up to your body. And what it is is it works on a camera that's or a device that's called a swivel and what it does is the swivel follows your voice so I'm going to record with that and teach and see how that plays out and use that for my um, flip classroom for parents I, I just think it's an important tool for teachers to be able to send home things that parents can watch just like you know, as easy as it is to make this video is as easy as it is for parents, for our teachers to make a video for their parents. Give them the tools to help you out. Um, even if it's the flashcard game. Like I play the flashcard game with my kids um, that I tutor all the time. And what I mean by the flashcard game <coughs> is that you give the kids the flashcards and they make two piles. I know it, I don't. And you rapidly do it very quickly. Because the ones they can do very quickly, there's no need for them to study those. So the only ones that they need to study are the ones that they don't know. Say for example, there's 10 that they don't know. Okay, well then that's two a night. Or you could do three a night. It doesn't matter, just learning those things. It's not learning the whole group all together. Um, you have to learn how to chunk things in manageable pieces. I, if I had three flashcards and I knew I had 24 hours to learn three flashcards, I could carry those three flashcards with me all the time. Um, if I were a parent, I could be driving in the car asking those three flashcards all the time. So it, that's the kinds of skills that teachers can very quickly um, teach to parents. All right, well, I'm at the point where I'm about to get on the highway and getting on the highway and recording, you know, I could probably do it because it doesn't take my hands except for when it falls like it just did a couple minutes ago. But uh, I think it would be better if I stopped for now. So anyway, oh wait, there's one last thing. The reason that why this Monday is gonna be a long Monday is because 
I have to stay because I'm the president of ATPE, which is the Association of Texas Professional Educators. I'm the president of our local chapter. I'm also a regional officer, but anyway, the local chapter, we give out two $500 scholarships to kids that are going into education at each of the high schools in our town. So yesterday I had the privilege of giving away two scholarships to two young ladies that are going into education. They were so excited, they had no idea. So that was $500 each. So, you know, hey, every bit counts, you know, add it up, it's perfect. And then tonight I'm going to the other high school and I'm giving out uh, two scholarships again. Hey everyone, oh my goodness, it's a long day. It is 8, 11 p.m. I am still not home yet. I am still not home yet. I just picked up some food to bring home because my daughter and her husband and the kids are at the house. And I am trying to make it home. Oh, I stopped and got milk too because, you know, there's always no milk in my house. I swear, I should have a dairy cow of my very own. It, I really should because then I would have milk at all times. But there's no milk in my house. So, so far, I have talked to my husband. I have talked to my daughter. I did the job thing. Did a lot of work today. We had our meeting this morning. It wasn't so much of a killer. It was a little bit of a killer because, you know, at times when you have meetings like that, and there's like 10, 12 people in a room and somebody is like directing the meeting, but it's really, like I told you this morning, a lot of it could be via email. Well, ugh. so we start doing other things and then my mind starts thinking, oh, I need to do this. I need to do that. But yeah, I, no, I didn't do it. I didn't do all the things, but, um, Lisa and I have planned out at least almost always all planned out our uh, PD that we're doing. And it's really funny because I know, like I said before, people teach and plan in different ways. Like I am, you know, have the skeleton and make it happen. And Lisa is more have the script and practice it. And I'm not like that. So, and the problem is that uh, two of these sessions are 90 minutes. Now, when you do PD, 90 minutes is nothing because those are your teachers. But when you're doing things for other organizations and you're doing presentations, 90 minutes is a heck of a long time. One of them, however, um, it's going to be pretty interactive. So I think that 90 minutes may fly by pretty quick. Uh, the ones for next week. Oh, somebody's making rocking chairs. Oh, those are pretty cool. I'd like that swing. Anyway, squirrel. Yeah, that's what that was like. That was a little ADD moment. Anyway, uh, the ones that we're doing next week are um, kind of pretty fun because they're smaller groups. It's not anything, you know, any stress. Um, I think I'm also doing the open number line concept with them. So I guess I do need to think about that. I started working on that because I am doing a PD with that. Uh, our new TEKS, uh, that's Essential Knowledge and Skills in the state of Texas. Our new TEKS next year, starting, I was really getting in there and looking for the word open or the words open number line. And it really does start in first grade is when they start talking about open number line. Now, they do in kindergarten talk about ordering numbers, displayed numbers. Well, what's a displayed number? So, um, I'm really, I'm working on that to get that put together. And I really think that, you know, the teachers are going to explore how this can really work and what the kids are, need to do. Uh, the other thing I need to figure out is if I'm going to make PDF of um, the cards that go with an open number line or if I'm going to allow them to explore and figure out what cards that they would need. Um, I have a kit that I bought and it's an open number line and it comes with like, I think it's like 250 cards. And so... Um, one of the processes is to give them the cards and let them figure out where they belong because these are not only whole numbers but it's fractionals I mean it's fractions it's decimals it's percentages so um, it'll be very interesting to see how they break it up and if if they are aware of um, 
what the new teaks call for as far as numeration and their grade level. So anyway, like I said, it is now 8.15 and I am still not up. Yes, I was up at 5.15. I was actually up way before that because uh, my daughter and her husband got in. I swear it must have been about 3.30. And you know, sometimes when you hear the sweet voice of your grandchildren, you're like, oh, I just want to get up. But I knew if I got up, I wouldn't go back to sleep. So I did um, stay in bed. <laughs> And I did get up at 5.15. So, it's 8.16, and I got up at 5.15. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. I know. Life goes on. So, I still have some work to do when I get home, but I don't know. I got to put the chickens up, that's for sure. Got to go out and say hi to the girls. Hi, chicky chickies. See how they survive the day. Make sure they have plenty of water. I am seriously thinking I am going to buy one of those waterers that attaches to a hose because that is something that I worry about is that, that them running out of water, especially with our heat. So anyway, hopefully tonight I'll get to upload this because what I realize is if I don't upload each section, it goes in as a big video and I don't like that. So happy Monday Eve. We'll talk to you soon. Love you. Bye.